We're here tonight with uh, Alex Gross. Uh, Alex is one of the newest members into the Fairmont uh, High School Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, Alex is a member of the Kettering Fairmont class of 2007. Alex earned a total of five varsity letters, including three in football and two in track and field. In football, he started every game from his sophomore through his senior year. His sophomore year, he played outside linebacker and strong safety for a team that went seven and three. He commanded so much respect that he was voted team captain as a junior. In addition to starting on defense and leading the team in most defensive categories, he also played fullback on offense and was the lead blocker for record-setting Hall of Fame runner Cameron Campo. As a senior, Alex was voted team captain, most valuable player, first team all G-Walk, first team all Dayton Daily News, all area, first team division one all Southwest District, and was chosen to play in the Miami Valley North-South All-Star Game. His senior year in track and field, he was voted team captain and was GWAC honorable mention in the 4x100, 4x200, and 4x400. In addition to his athletic exploits, he was valedictorian of the class of 2007 and was the recipient of the prestigious Sherm Bowser Award. He went on to Columbia University where he started at linebacker all four years. He was team captain twice, team MVP twice, and first team all Ivy League twice. In 2007, he was Ivy League Rookie of the Year, and in 2010, he was the Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year. After playing professionally in Europe, he returned to the United States and played for and was captain of Team USA. Alex is currently living in Columbus with his wife, Julia, and their two children, Jude and Josie. Congratulations on being inducted. Impressive so resume. Much, Mr. Lauder. Alex, um, you were what we call an Iron Man at Fairmont, starting every game your last three years there. Did you have any injuries along the way and anything that threatened to break that streak? <laughs> I'm, I'm really curious about yeah, that. Yeah, there was, a, you know, taking uh, quite, a, quite a beating Absolutely. over the years, playing offense and defense, right. having the, the pleasure of blocking for Cameron, as you mentioned, and uh, really sticking your nose in there in, in a very physical game. Uh, the one that sticks out specifically was a high ankle sprain in a homecoming game oh, against wow. Springfield North, I believe. I don't remember if it was my junior or senior year that uh, think a sprained ankle and you think you know, ice it, elevate it, you'll be back there the next week. But I learned a lot about the body and <laughs> about, a, about the how, to, how to manage and, and work through injuries. Fortunately, obviously a, a great coaching staff and a great training staff was able to sort of get it back to uh, playing shape within a week. Uh, took it easy on the dance floor at the homecoming dance that <laughs> night. And, uh, did what I needed to do to be able to come back with a little bit of a uh, brace and, and a wrap and, and play the game. But uh, fortunate, very fortunate to have never had anything you know, too major over the course of my career here at Fairmont. Good. Just out of curiosity, did you ever encounter any injuries collegiately? My junior year at Columbia, and it's, it's funny now that you start asking the questions, how vividly the memories come <laughs> back to, to all of these moments in, in every game, uh, was on the opening kickoff of the fourth game of my junior year and was covering the kick and ended up uh, taking a shot from the side where my knee uh, did everything that it wasn't supposed Gordon. to do and did the ACL, MCL oh, wow. and the meniscus and you know missed a better part of my junior season. But again, thanks to great support and, and the ability to, to bounce back, played from day one of my senior year and was able to come back as, as strong as Good. ever. Uh, one of the things I mentioned when I read the bio, um, you were elected captain as a junior. That doesn't happen very often. Um, what was it like to be in a position of leadership over teammates who were a year <laughs> older? Sure. Yeah, and something that I'm grateful for as it's prepared me for a professional career as well where, you, you know, you. You work hard, you, you try and do the right things, you, you try and be really coachable, and you try and buy into the system and the, the culture that is being built, whether it's a high school football team, a college football team, 
or a business or a school, whatever you're doing, uh, you really you buy in and, and you believe in what's happening there, and it comes naturally that people start to, to see that what you're doing, you know, it, it makes sense and there's a trust that it's going to pay off and fortunate that, you know, you, you find people are willing to vote for you for a position of leadership and you just continue to understand and, and lead with empathy and try and recognize that it may be uncomfortable for some of the people that are older than you mm -hmm. and uh, do everything you can to manage and nurture those relationships and uh, focus on the objectives of the team. Good. Um, any particular game or games that stand out as you reflect back on those uh, football seasons here at Fairmont? Yeah, I could reflect on a lot of them <laughs> and a lot of them stand out. I think there's some that are, are particularly special, uh, you know, beating Beaver Creek in a really close game at home here, uh, beating Alter in that year that that Cameron was was here and running the ball like crazy. Uh, I think that was the first time in a, in a good while that we took care of business mm -hmm. against Alter my, my junior season. And there's nothing like that first Friday here at, at Roush Stadium when right. it's, it's packed on both sides and right. the whole town is, is here and uh, never really can replicate an adrenaline rush or a high like you get when you run out on the field that first time of the, of the season, especially against a rival. Right. As you think about the, the teams you played, any one was you would consider the biggest rival? You know, that's tough. I, I, I think, I I think uh, over, even over my, my career, things evolved quite a bit. You know, it was always, always Alter, always Centerville. I think a lot of, you know, the proximity mattered. The competitiveness right. of those games mattered. I think during my time here from, you know, 2004 or 5 to 2007, Beaver Creek was on the rise. And they were sort of next up as a, as a rival for, for Fairmont, and we played some really close and competitive games with them. So those were always important, and those were always big ones to win. And then as we got into the meat of the GWAC season, of course, you, you want to win all of those. Right. And you have the perennial powerhouses in the league, too, like Wayne, that sends a lot of guys to you know, Big Ten schools and Power Five schools that are, are really, really kind of have the targets on their back, and you want to beat those guys. And... Uh, you get up for the, all those games as well. Sure. Uh, who were some of the people who influenced you the most as an athlete here at Fairmont? There's, there's a, folks like your son, Dan, that uh, as, a, as a freshman or a sophomore, you see the guys that are, are really just working really hard and really trying to create a, a culture of, of togetherness here. And you followed some of those folks that were a few years ahead of you. And uh, it's funny looking back and thinking about you became that person, even mm -hmm. though you didn't feel like the one that you were idolizing as a kid. There were other freshmen and sophomores that started looking at you that way. And uh, it really registered for me at that time when I became one of the older guys on the team. Like, oh, yeah, people used to look at I used to look at guys this way. People looking at me this way. There's a certain way you should act in a certain way. You should carry yourself. And, and that was really big. And and then the, the, the coaching staff was, was huge for me. I mean, I had guys like, like Coach Rockery and Coach Blevins and Coach Dement that uh, throughout the course of the entire year, not just the season, were invested in, in me as a person. Mm -hmm. And that meant what I was doing in school, what I was doing in the weight room, and of course, what I was doing on the field. And knowing that people like that are invested in you, uh, it, it, it brings out the best in you. Sure. It, it makes you want to work hard. It makes you, again, want to do the right things and act the right way. And, uh, all of that sort of influenced my, my path here and, and got me to, to where, I, where, I get, where I am now. Good. Um, how did you juggle multiple sports and the academic <laughs> workload to be able to graduate valedictorian? Yeah. Uh, Either one is amazing, it's, but combined, it's remarkable. It, it was uh, a, lot of, a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, a big commitment to, again, just doing what's what's right sort of by by your heart and and what you feel like you you need to do to, to take care of business and generally do the right things i think uh, fortunate to have had a brother a year older than me that graduated in 2010 that set the bar pretty high for me and my, my brother benjamin was was also a valedictorian i, I know that yeah and uh, the competitive piece in me <laughs> didn't want to fall short of right. the bar that he had set. 
And so it was really just about being able to, to grind it out and you know, find, the, find the sleep when you can and yeah. uh, get up early and exercise and get ready for football or track or whatever it was and um, just keep pushing yourself and you'd be surprised what, what you're capable of. Good. Um, after your Hall of Fame career at Fairmont that we've been talking about, you went on, as we mentioned, to great success in football at the college level. Aside from the obvious talent level, how would you compare the two experiences? You know, the, there's a lot of, of guys on a football team, and each of them has something to contribute at, at every level. And that's what really the, the thread that I saw pull through from my time here at Fairmont to my time in college, where I had this expectation that, you know, everyone's going to be elite and everyone is going to be expecting to, to play every play. And ultimately, there's 11 guys on the field at a time. And there were some really talented guys here that played different roles than starting running back or starting linebacker. Mm -hmm. And there were guys in college that did the same thing. And what, what was great is, you know, having really incredible teammates that were committed to making the team better. And I, I saw that pull through at, at every level where, you know, there's scout team guys that are out there making, making everybody better, preparing you for the next week and trying to help you achieve what you set out to achieve on the field. And that was really powerful. And I saw that pull through in terms of, you know, a, a difference. It's, it's the time and the expectation to a degree, you know, there's a lot more meetings, a lot more film, a lot more hours between the weight room and the practice field in, in college. And there's a little bit of adjustment there, but you're just so energized and so excited about what's ahead of you. You, you know, during the season, it's week to week. You, you're preparing for an opponent in the off season. You're preparing for the next season and wanting to improve upon the previous one. And so those hours that you get to do football versus do school or whatever else you're messing around doing, yeah. <laughs> like those are the best hours of your day. Right. And that, that certainly resonated with me over the course of, of my entire career playing football. Good. Tough question. You and your wife, Julia, have two children. <laughs> what would you like them to know about their dad as a high school athlete? <laughs> and they're going to ask. <laughs> They'll ask. I, I will defer to mm -hmm. others to give them uh, whatever it is that, that they thought of me as a high school athlete. I think the biggest thing that I hope that I can demonstrate for, for my family as they grow up is just sort of work ethic and grit are, are important. Whether you play sports or you play trumpet or you do software engineering, things aren't always gonna go as you expect them to go. And the best thing that, that they can, you know, hopefully glean from whatever accomplishments or success that I've had is that uh, it, it was a matter of commitment and, and caring and counting on people around you and lifting other people up around you that gets you to where you, you hope to go. And again, that, that applies to sport, that applies to school, that applies to being a family or being a citizen in the community like this. Um, do good and, and try hard. Good, that's a great answer. Um, Finally, uh, Alex, what advice do you have for young, current Firebird athletes from a Hall of Famer? If you're out here, we've got the wee Firebirds or the young track runners, whatever it is, what advice would you give those young yeah, It's a similar thread to, to what I just mentioned, would be you know, recognize that you can't do anything alone and what's really gonna elevate you or take you to the next level is, is is, is caring and, and giving a darn. And again, that applies to, to everything you do. Uh, it's easy to go through the motions. It, it's easy to set it into cruise control. And it's important to just really check yourself from time to time and say, you know, what am I doing here? What am I trying to accomplish? Who do I need to help me do this? Who can I help in achieving what they're trying to do? And if you, if you stop and think about that, you'll, you'll recognize that there's a lot of opportunity to, to elevate yourself and others, and uh, you'll, you'll achieve a lot if, if you count on others and you have empathy and, and you really just commit to what you're doing. I just thought of another question. I've asked a couple of the other uh, recipients. It seems like 
today, there's a lot of emphasis on almost forcing young athletes to specialize mm -hmm. in one sport. You were a multi-sport uh, athlete. What are your thoughts on that specialization? In fact, you have children, so you may encounter yeah. that down the road. What are your thoughts on the specialization that's occurring now? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate that you know, my parents were exposing me to everything growing up. And if I could have played soccer in the spring instead of the fall and football didn't conflict with that, I, I would have loved to have done that. And I think, um, you know, when you specialize too young, you miss the opportunity to find what you're you know, really good at, but more importantly, really passionate about. And so I, I certainly encourage you know, diversifying your, your endeavors when it comes to athletics and, and beyond that. You know, as, as I've gotten older, <laughs> I, one, wish I could play a musical instrument, which my parents exposed me to, but I opted out of as soon as I started playing football in second grade. Two, wish I could swing a golf club better, which I thought was boring and slow and didn't want to do because right. I was playing football or shooting hoops. But, um, you know, athleticism as athleticism and there are certain things you can glean from every sport that you play or every activity that you do that will carry over to the one that you ultimately end up focusing on like I did with football. I can give a lot of credit to basketball and to, to track and field for the success that I ended up having in football because of a lot of mechanical things and athletic things that I, I got from those sports that weren't necessarily uh, as specific as they were in, in those sports as they are in football. Good. When you get to be my age, you can look forward to pickleball. <laughs> we've started, we've actually started doing <laughs> pickleball. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a, a late adopter, or, okay. but uh, yeah, we're, we're loving doing that and something that we're excited to, to do with our kids too. Good. Well, Alex, it's been my pleasure. Again, congratulations you so on much. your induction and yeah. hope you have a good time tomorrow at the actual ceremony. Absolutely. Thanks Thank so much. You. Take yep. care.